All right, so I want to talk about a little bit about how the illusion is out here because see there's a lot of debates such as like you know flat earth round earth type of shit but one thing is is this okay let's say for example if you can never physically see the earth in person let's say you, are you able to go outside of space because there's always now uh certain theories that you really can't go out of space and then there's other people who say you could go out of space that we've been to the moon and whatnot okay but there's no actual pictures other than CGI of the picture of the earth, which to me really doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? But let's say, for example, um, it's all about angles, okay? We talk about if we're in a flat plane, right? Because we're in a flat plane, they say, you have the sun and the moon that they're really, really close together. You know what I'm saying? They're really, really close together. How could the people underneath us see that if we're in a ball? You get what I'm saying? And that makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? But who is to say that there's only one sun? You know what I'm saying? We're in a duality matrix. You know what I'm saying? They, they, who is to say there's only one sun? And what is the other sun? I mean, just look at your body, for example. You know what I'm saying? You have that inner sun within you. You know what I'm saying? Who is to say you're not that second sun or whatnot or how you project it? However it may be, whatever you believe the planets to look like, it's on you. But here's the, here's the thing, though. If I have a picture of somebody, a person, I'm looking at it from a 2D point of view. Now, I'm never going to see that person in 3D unless I meet that person in person. If that person is in front of me, then they're going to look 3D to me. If I'm seeing them on camera, they still look two-dimensional to me. And if I'm looking at them in a picture, it is still two-dimensional to me. So let's say they were able to take a picture from space. They could pick, Let's say if the Earth was flat, okay? They can take a picture from the top of the dome or any angle where it would look like the Earth was flat. But then if they went a little bit, a few degrees down, they may, they may see a flat plane. You know what I'm saying? And if you really look at it, a lot of people are living up here anyway. And if you start to see that there's a whole universe underneath you, you can start to see that it, the shapes really doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's all a matter of taste, in my opinion, because if you really want to look at it from, uh, let's say, guys, some guys like rounder chicks, some guys like thinner chicks, some girls like muscular guys, some guys like thinner guys, some guys like fatter chubbier guys whatever it may be it's a matter of taste whatever you want it to look all these people are planets you know what i'm saying in, in their respective self in their respective selves but um if you're living here okay you're basically let's say this is this is like a flat plane right here they're living here this is the dome okay um under oh, look at the conscious subconscious like i said i use the analogy of that the, the iceberg and then you got that little piece on top and then you got that big boulder underneath and your body's made of water you know what I'm saying? So all the power is basically underneath, which is why when you go to the bottom of the ocean, you find hidden treasures. You'll find the gems. When you go to the abyss, you know what I'm saying? That's why they say demon, daemon, or, or the genius, the genie. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, you're basically living here. But when you live here, you think, like, for example, that you're hungry because you have no connection to basically understanding what really hunger is when hunger comes from a sensation in your throat. So if you were coming even to this level, you would understand that. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you go further down, you'll even know if you're dehydrated or not because now you're exploring your waters. You know what I'm saying? And you'll know what nutrition you actually really need and what really what nutrition really is. See, a lot of people have the confusion or misconception that you need so much of something to be healthier and your body doesn't really need a lot of anything. Your body is very efficient. We make it inefficient because the body is uh, uh, it adapts to a lot of things. So the more you give it, the lazier it gets. You know what I'm saying? That's why when people have trouble sleeping, they take melatonin instead of actually figuring out first why they can't sleep. They always want to look out to something to take to make themselves sleep or lose weight. You know what I'm saying? Or, and that could be just metabolism has a lot to do with your thyroid. You know what I'm saying? And why is your thyroid imbalanced? Could have a, a number of different things to do. And my next video, I'm going to make it on certain nutrition, certain diets, the importance of certain things and why certain things are trending so high such as keto diets and whatnot and you know the protein and fruitarian shit i'm going to get into that in another video which is going to be my next video and this one i want to talk about just basically um you know if you're if you're 
first eye is basically functioning, you're gonna start to see things a little bit differently. For example, I can't help but to see, like I told you in my previous video, faces in, in trees and the clouds and certain things that you may see, certain patterns, like even moles I see in people, they just look like certain patterns and whatnot. I'm having a good time doing that because those are things I used to do when I was actually younger. And when I go into meditation, I notice the beautiful thing about meditation is that certain memories of things that I used to do when I was younger actually are starting to surface up. Such things like um, I used to play hockey and I used to actually love when I used to score goals and whatnot. I was actually one of the best players on the team. But I noticed that one of the things I was doing before I went to bed was because I loved the, the feeling of the, the, the glory, you know, the, 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 the players coming up and cheering, you know, man, what you're an awesome goal and whatnot. And I was so agile. I was very quick. I skate really good, man. I feel like when I'm on skates, I feel like I skate better than I can walk or run or do anything because I feel like I'm free. I'm gliding. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm literally... I feel like the Silver Surfer. I mean, you could basically name any character you want. I feel like that because I can do anything I want on skates. I can do turns, twists, flip. I can do 360s. I mean, I've put myself on camera and how I skate. I haven't showed you everything I could do, but I could do a lot on skates. You know what I'm saying? And I feel good because I love it. I skate with my dog. I skate. It's just something I love to do. So basically, I feel like that was what I was my passion. I, I was born to skate, man. That's how I feel. So basically, when... when um. You know, when, when I go into, into, when I was going into sleep when I was like younger, I remember I used to envision myself scoring the winning goals, three hat tricks, you know, a, a hat trick, which is basically three goals in a, in a row. They would throw hats in the rink and, and you know, all the players. And I just, I felt like I was getting goosebumps. I was literally feeling like I was in that moment, literally. And then, you know what I'm saying? It was just because that was what it was all about when I was at that age. And then I started getting older. You know what I'm saying? I had a kid. You know what I'm saying? Now relationships, bills, all these things now started to take the place of those things that I used to do. But I remember that those things that I used to do not only made me the best player on the team, but it also trickled down into everything that I was doing, which is basically why I was the best at whatever I did, which was work. If I was, if I, any job I did, I was the manager. I was always the head, the, the, the head in charge. I was always the one, you know, when it came to relationships with females, I was always very successful, you know, having friends um, was always successful because that that what I was doing was trickling down into all those areas of things that I was involved in in my life in this realm. You know what I'm saying? And then it started to uh, go into different avenues and whatnot. And then, you know, we start becoming conscious and, and things like that. And I started to lose a passion for me working on the things that I was doing as a manager. Now my reality starts to change. You know what I'm saying? So now it's about maintaining control of that through that journey and not losing the control you know what i'm saying and here's what i was going to get get it get into when when it comes down to just ba and that's basically swimming down these waters you know what i'm saying but as i'm swimming down these waters i'm noticing that what i'm seeing in my physical reality is basically i can't help but to see the, how the nipples and and the stomach looks like another face you know what i'm saying and what's funny enough though is that when, when you see that, let's say your pineal gland is in the middle of your brain. If, if you look at your stomach based on the dissection of another, another body where somebody showed you, the stomach actually looks like a brain. And what's crazy is that the belly button is in the middle of your stomach. And it's the same way how your pineal gland is in the middle of your head. Now, the, the, the crazy thing is that nobody pays attention to their belly button. When people are meditating, they still appear trying to figure out the third eye, third eye, third eye. But in actuality, if you start to focus on your belly button, you start to feel your belly button pulsating. You're going to have some crazy ass breakthroughs doing that. And I don't even want to tell you what they are. You figure out what they are for yourself. But start to focus on different areas underneath. And I also noticed that when you start to focus on, you know, your, your chakra up above, and the lower chakra simultaneously everything in between starts to basically activate and pulsate because you know sometimes we meditate and we only focus on one chakra and that's what we feel like energy flows where attention goes right but if you try to make that focus on those two centers on those two points simultaneously everything in the middle starts to pulsate fucking crazy but particularly the belly button look at the belly button when you astral project or, or let's say out of body experiences you'll notice you have a silver cord but when you were in your mother's belly that's where all the nutrients were being fed to you you know what i'm saying until you came out which is basically coming in here is a transformation and now they cut that cord it's just like when you are being fed now spiritually through the belly button the same way because you, you, you think that it's just coming only from, you know, the third eye perspective. And basically, it's, it's coming. There's, there's the nutrients coming in here, too. That's the etheric cord. You know what I'm saying? That's very important. And you basically ground your feet 
and you also focus on the tendrils up here on top. See these right here, I compare to the Wi-Fi network that, because a lot of people, you could tell them, yo, you got roots coming out your head, you know what I'm saying? But in actuality, it's just like the trees. The trees have pheromones and the vibrations and frequencies up above. You don't see that, but that's how they're communicating. You know what I'm saying? We disconnected from that because we don't pay any attention to that and we think it's not possible. But Wi-Fi is possible and you can't see Wi-Fi network. You know what I'm saying? And then the roots from your feet, those are the soles of your feet. That's soul food. You know what I'm saying? But if you're eating properly, you have to... That's why I said focus now you could do this physically as well focus on the top crown and the, the your feet being grounded to 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 the soil and you're basically going to start to feel um the energy in the middle centers you know what i'm saying um funny enough though it's is that it, it all comes down to belief you have to imag use your imagination and believe in this process that you are actually it's it, what you're doing would be a ritual it's something that you're doing for whatever reasons it may be why are you doing that you know what I'm saying? Is it to gain more wisdom, more information, or whatnot? But look at this, for example. Your eyes, you tear. Anything that looks like an eye secretes something. So you tear with your eyes, which is basically, your tears is, is basically your essence. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you could do blood, sweat, and tears, and you use those fluids in rituals, don't you? So do you notice how women's uh, nipples lactate? You know what I'm saying? Milk. So it's like tears. It looks like tears to me. Your pineal gland secretes melatonin and serotonin. So it's secreting something. Anything that looks like an eye secretes something. Okay? Now, you also have, for example, the mouth, which I compare it to a vagina. It is very similar. A vagina gets wet when she's turned on and your mouth salivates when you're hungry. The little punching ball in the back of your throat to me looks like the clit and then if you finger a girl and you you feel that that skin that's in the back feels very similar to the skin that's in the back top part of your mouth when you put your tongue all the way back there you know what i'm saying so a lot of similarities all right now women receive through their vaginal area you know what i'm saying the phallus of the man and what we eat for example is basically it's the same thing what you put in your mouth is kind of the same thing it could be toxic or it could be uh uh empowering either way it's a source of information and when two people unite sexually that's a download they become one they're basically downloading each other okay it's a connection it's about one of the strongest connections you could possibly get into you know what i'm saying now, if you go further down, for example, you look at the pelvic bone of the woman, it kind of looks like, you know, two horns, and then you have the ovaries. The ovaries look like eyeballs, too. If you look at it from a diagram standpoint of view, and the ovaries secrete, you know, when, when women menstruate, you know what I'm saying? When they ovulate or whatnot. And, um, you know, a man, for example, I see that basically, the, the ovaries are basically, they fall and they become testicles, and then the clit. It just elongates into a penis. You know what I'm saying? It's just ba basically everything is just more dense. Men are more dense. Women are lighter than men naturally. You know what I'm saying? Men are stronger, but women are metaphysically stronger. Okay? Um, and that's some women. You know what I'm saying? Women who are in tune and know what they're doing. But um, women are attractive. Okay? Uh, it's a negative energy. Men are more of in a uh, uh, it's not men but masculine energy is electric but, but but men have that feminine energy within them and it's about connecting to that that's why if you have that connection to your feminine side not to act like i said like like you know gay or anything like that i mean if that's what you are there's no problem with that that's you all right but either way if you're balanced you can use the feminine energy but still express yourself as a man you know what I'm saying? You'd have better connection with females. You'd have better connection with Mother Earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically how it is. It's basically, if you connect with your feminine aspect, you will be more connected to Mother Earth. Same way you would connect to females here. All right? How do you get along with your own mom? You know what I'm saying? So, flaws or not, like my mom has had many, many flaws, but I have one of the best relationships with my mom. Something I didn't have before, but I have it now. And I'm appreciative of it now. I don't need to think about anything that happened in the past between her and I. You know what I'm saying? Because it basically... Everything was just something that was coming from within me anyway. And when I did certain changes, everything outside of me started to change. Like literally another person. 
um, but it all comes down to the belief in you. Where are you putting your, your attention toward the energies outside of you or know that these energies outside of you are in you and you can direct and order them like your own CEO, literally minding your own business because this is your business. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, you know, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I think that was all I, I wanted to cover. Um, you know, I basically, like I said, I was watching my, my previous video. Um, and by the way, th I know I was talking about uh, mycelium network and all that, like the roots, how, you know, plants. See, here's the thing, because it's not always survival of the fittest. Because if you look at plants, for example, in nature, they're actually working with each other, yet they're so close together. Because a lot of people, like, they, you know, I garden, so... They tell me, oh man, you got your plants, you know, planted too close together. Um, you know, they compete for nutrients and whatnot. The reason that happens is because there's no mycelium network underneath. That fungal network is very, very important because that's actually what's entangling itself in the root system and basically um, exchanging information from one plant to another. And again, the, the pheromones and the vibration and frequency above ground is the same way it's happening underneath. You know what I'm saying? You can't disrupt that. The moment you start moving the soil and whatnot, you disrupt that mycelium network, which are basically like white little threads. They look like cotton threads. You know what I'm saying? But that's basically what's feeding one plant to another. Plants basically work in harmony with each other. They're in community. But when there's no connection, then it starts to have that illusion of like uh, survival of the fittest. That's why people now are in competition all the time. Survival of the fittest because they don't have any connection with each other. If you start to understand the connection we have between each other, you would not be in competition, jealous, or anything like that with each other. You know what I'm saying? When you look outside yourself, that's why they say the jealous God. When the jealous God, you are not that jealous God. You know what I'm saying? You're only seeing it as a jealous God because you're jealous of other people because that's what you're projecting out and you're reflecting that back to you. You know what I'm saying? They'll teach you about the jealous God, but jealous God, God shouldn't be jealous of anything. But because if you know that you are God and you are connected to everything, you know that that God is just the total polar opposite that we would have to look at as a, du you know, because we're in a duality matrix. You know what I'm saying? But that mycelium network underneath... You go in nature, you'll see different type of trees. You see pine trees, one type of tree, maple tree, all these trees. And yet they can all strive and harmony with each other. But the, the, you'll notice that there's also a canopy. You know what I'm saying? All the trees basically are so bunched up together that they, they shade the soil. And they, they're literally shading it because if, the sun, if there was too much sunlight hitting that soil, it would actually destroy those beneficial microbes. That mycelium network couldn't uh, survive there because the sun would be beaming that up so for example when we garden we don't have that mycelium that we're created but we also don't have all these big plants canopying over the soil see that's why i put so many plants bunched up together because it actually protected all the soil underneath and not only that i put organic matter compost but i also put uh, a bunch of wood chips and what that did was is that that's breaking down and as that breakdown happens that's creating a fungal network that mycelium network underneath and what that's doing is that's feeding the plants naturally see because we go to lowe's and all these these plant nurseries to buy a lot of uh fertilizers and whatnot and that's not that's not organic fertilizers because you're going to be eating that through the fruits that you're bearing out of these 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 plants. You know what I'm saying? When it's doing it in a natural way, that mycelium fungal network is actually feeding the plants, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and whatever it may need from underneath. And it's feeding the plant. And that's what you're going to be eating. And in turn, the plant is taking the energy from the sun in the form of sugars and, and carbs and br basically bringing it underneath, which is what the mycelium network needs to survive. So it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship. And this is happening through a community. Like there's going to be one tree that can communicate to another tree that may be hundreds and hundreds of feet away. You know what I'm saying? But let's say if there was a, a, a tree that's weak in nature, then that strong tree can actually feed that tree that's weaker in nature all due to that fungal network if that fungal network didn't exist then that plant would strive to survive on its own because it would think that there's nothing around it the same way we think there's nothing around us okay that we can benefit from because we don't see the connecting connectedness in it and we're in competition when we're only in competition with ourselves when we look at it like that all right so um as within so without you know what i'm saying um in nature is basically neutral 
You see, the people think that because you see the fungus and all that, those mushrooms, that they're actually robbing nutrients from the plant. But see, they could be parasitic, but they're only parasitic if the tree is unhealthy. That's why when you go into nature, sometimes you'll see mushrooms growing out of the trunk of the out of the trunk of the the tree. And people look at that as that's beautiful, but that's not. That means that that tree is dying, and it's and it's parasitically being eaten from within. And what happens is that when that tree dies, it falls and it becomes compost. For the other trees that are around. You know what I'm saying? It's still a beautiful thing. Even though it looks like something bad is happening. Alright. So. Um, it's just like us. We stay healthy. And. We use. These things to our advantage. Rather than. Them taking advantage of us. If, if one of your plants are sick. It's going to be more susceptible to. Pests. But when a plant is healthy. There's no pest there. Yeah. And the contrary. But. You're also going to be attracting beneficial microbes. You're nothing but a big bag of bacteria to begin with anyway. You know what I'm saying? So there's got to be that connection from here to here. You know what I'm saying? Because all the bacteria, you have to have that balance between 80-20 of gut microbium, which is probiotic, to gut yeast. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you still need the bad shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's breaking down the same way it would break down a tree and convert it to compost. It's breaking down shit that sometimes your body can't process. All right, so there's got to be a balance. The same way you can't be too alkaline, but you can't be too acidic. There has to be a balance. All right, so uh, that's basically about it. I mean, I um, think that's all I wanted to cover, but uh, like, share, subscribe, and we'll talk soon.